Um, first, I just want to say um, thank you to everyone for joining us here. Uh, it's a very emotional day for me, really. Um, it's this time where a lot of things are coming together, Dapper's five-year mark, um, together with the CNCF graduation, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you for everyone who went on the original GitHub issue and upvoted Dapper's uh, graduation proposal. That was very impactful in showing the CNCF to see that um, Dapper is loved by so many people. So. To the Dapper community, you are amazing. Please continue supporting us, really appreciate it. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about um, our maintainers roadmap. So uh, hi again, everyone. Um, I'm Ron Schneider, uh, a steering committee member and core maintainer of the Dapper project. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about some of the longer term roadmap for Dapper. I'm gonna cover things that are coming into Dapper 115 plus things that are beyond Dapper 115. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, I'm really happy to announce a conversational API, which is Dapper first step into the gender of AI world. Um, we've been getting a lot of asks from people about oh, what is Dapper gonna do about AI? And for a long time, we were kind of quiet about it um, because we don't wanna you know, just tie Dapper to stuff unless there is a visible value prop. Um, but now, thanks to an upstream collaboration between Intel um, and Diagrid and the overall community, we're introducing an API that is aimed at removing all the complexity for developers when interacting, securing, and making reliable um, LLM models at scale, which means you will have a single API for conversation um, that does batch inferencing as a best practice by default. So this API basically already has inside of it all of the best practices that you would look to uh, when interacting with LLMs and it launches with support for AWS Bedrock, OpenAI, Anthropic, Mistral and Hugging Face for these specific providers. And every model that is supported by the underlying LLM provider will be supported um, by the conversational API right out of the box, um, which is great. But, you know, abstracting these models can definitely remove the uh, guessing work game um, when developers are tasked with trying to figure out how to interact with these different SDKs. It opens it up to developers who are not necessarily Python experts or C++ experts, um, where most of these underlying SDKs are, are really aimed for. Um, and that's great. But um, there's also major challenges today that we identified um, when interacting with LLM for enterprises specifically. Um, and some of them have to do, of course, with uh, making sure that you protect yourself from uh, sensitive data information um, that might go into the LLM and might be you know, used uh, for malicious purposes or where you're returning data that sits inside of the LLM training data inside of the uh, optimized model um, that the LLM returns to the user based on a, a malicious prompt or just a prompt that um, caused the LLM to, to spew out um, that, that uh, training data that it shouldn't have. Um, and then, uh, of course, caching, uh, you know, you have an LLM, you issue 50,000 requests, probably going to burn down a rainforest or two and go bankrupt um, if you don't have some level of caching because not all prompts um, need to uh, actually hit the LLM to, to return an inference response. Uh, you basically want to be able to cache stuff um, so that you don't actually hit it because it does cost money and it's just more environment friendly and nice. So Dapper launches in 115 with these two features that apply to any LLM that you can use. So any of the LLM providers that you see here on the middle bullet point and all of their associated models will have PII scrubbing, which means you can configure Dapper to remove credit cards, names, email, uh, phone numbers, from any data that is being inputted into an LLM model um, from the data input and when the LLM returns a response. You can also configure Dapper optionally to scrub any PII data that it detects when the LLM returns the output back to the user. Um, and the second feature is caching. So you will have caching, um, which means that you can set a, you will be able to set a uh, time to live on a particular um, LLM model and basically say, look, any response that resembles um, the, the response, any response that came before it for the given duration of let's say 10 minutes will not hit the LLM and it will return the latest cached response inside of Dapper, which is gonna be uh, focused in memory. So um, these two features uh, greatly improve the experience of just making LLMs more secure and reliable. And we will be looking to add more and more of these. Now, what do we need? Um, well, no one can actually answer me because this is a webinar, but I will answer for you. What we need is feedback from the community. Um, if you are developing AI-based generative AI applications at scale, please let us know on GitHub, on the issue, on Discord. Um, I'm available, every Dapper maintainer is basically available um, to talk to. Let us know what um, LLM 
challenges you are facing, and uh, we will try as to the best of our ability to add them into Dapper. Uh, also coming in 115 is a stable workflow. So workflow has been introduced in Dapper 111, I think, um, as an alpha API. Um, we've done a lot of work since then, like revamping the entire underlying Actor implementation to make it much more performant and scalable. And uh, with Dapper 115, you'll be able to scale to millions uh, of activities and workflows, um, which are really aimed at large scale enterprise workloads. Um, you know, you, you can't really put like uh, all of the scenarios that workflow fits for in, in, in a list because there's just too many. Um, but we've worked with companies that are already taking workflows into production with uh, scenarios, mainstream scenarios like data processing, AI agentic systems, which you will hear more about uh, in this talk later on today to make sure that workflows really fit these um, up and coming scenarios that they're just getting more and more common in cloud native uh, ecosystems. And we're launching with support for Java, Python, Go, C Sharp, Prost, and JavaScript slash TypeScript. Um, so all of the uh, main Dapper Hero SDKs, including Rust. Um, thank you, Mike, community contributor, for adding Rust support. And I'm happy to announce that PHP support is coming to Dapper Workflows. So we have a maintainer, um, an awesome maintainer called Robert, who is working on adding workflow support for PHP. Um, that's pretty great. It's going to be really interesting to see how workflows meet the web with a PHP and, and what you can do there. So um, yes, definitely look for um, more SDK support for workflows as time goes by. But making workflows stable has actually improved many other things in Dapper, like the actor ecosystem. Um, when, when Dapper 114 came out, we include something called the scheduler service. It's currently in preview. Um, and that basically serves three purposes. It makes workflows much more stable and scalable. It improves actor reminders specifically. So if you're a user of um, Dapper actor reminders today, come 115. Um, the scheduler service that underpins workflows will be made the default implementation for actors, and it should make um, your actor reminders much more scalable. You won't see a whole bunch of errors you might be seeing today if you're trying to launch um, tens of thousands of reminders uh, concurrently, for example. And um, yes, we're, we're looking for your feedback. And there is going to be a migration path. So Dapper um, automatically will take reminders from your existing system and convert them into the new system. And you don't have to do anything. There is no form of operation that you're going to need to do on your uh, stateful system or even touch your database to make that work. So we're really happy with how this is coming along. And um, beyond 115, what we're looking at is improving the state story in Dapper. Um, I stood here a year ago, I think, before you, and I said that we will try to improve this. And we have, but we're taking baby steps. And I mean, this is a pretty large undertaking, but we've made some strides in trying to understand what are the, the different APIs we, we want to um, undertake. And what we've realized today that Dapper State APIs is called state management. That's you know um, very, very generic, but in, in effect, it's it's really a key value transactional uh, state. And it's really useful for a lot of you know session-based, chopping-based, IoT-based um, type of uh, scenarios, but users have constantly been asking us to improve it. Um, and so we will look into uh, splitting these out into their own respective APIs um, that are each individually specialized in doing whatever they're best doing. So uh, interacting with blobs, um, SQL queries, which I think is by far the most common request we've had for the Dapper uh, SQL API, and the document store, which is for uh, unstructured data, um, or even you know sometimes semi-structured data. It remains to be seen. So all of these uh, items are listed in the proposal repository. Please go in there, look for proposals that you care about, and then give us your feedback about what's being listed there. This is, again, really, really important because we want to make sure that whatever we maintainers come up with um, is, is very uh, unique and, and friendly you know, with, with the community, that we're not just going off doing something that will not serve users. So yes, we are in touch with the community, but any, any form of feedback no matter how small, really helps us um, get just another perspective, which is really important for us. OK, so longer term roadmap beyond 115. Uh, there is an open proposal in the proposal repository to add an ability to list keys in state store. So today, you have key value. That's great. But what if you actually need to be able to list all the keys? You know, you um, don't necessarily always have a convention to be able to um, know all of the keys you, you need to fetch. And even if you do have a convention, just listing out 10,000 different operations in a for loop isn't the most um, 
efficient thing to do, especially if you're using a cloud database that uh, charges you by the operation or by number of operations, right? Um, so we are looking to uh, add this um, quality of life improvement to be able to list keys, which will make the existing key value API much easier to use. Um, it's not the end of the story. Um, the you know, larger end of the story is really this slide, which is what we're, we want to do. But until then, we want to make sure that we improve uh, the lives of our existing users. Um, another open proposal, which probably now should not be a proposal anymore, um, is delayed pub sub. So this is also a highly requested community feature. The ability to publish a message to Dapper using any of Dapper's supported pub sub brokers and just tell Dapper, hey, publish this message, but not right now, in another year from now, right? And then Dapper will wake up in a year and then just send that delayed pub sub message. Now that we have the scheduler service that underpins act reminders and workflows and the jobs API that I've alluded to earlier, we can actually accomplish this very easily. So I'm not even sure a proposal is needed for this now um, that we have the building block. But if you want to take a closer look at what this API will include and how it will look like, please go in the proposals repository um, and um, yeah, uh, just read it. Uh, another open proposal that we've had for some time is an authorization API. Um, you know, authorization is difficult. Um, for authentication, Dapper does a whole lot today for you. Um, we have authentication middleware, so calling Dapper or getting, uh, you know, responses from Dapper. Going in your application, you can configure Dapper to work against uh, OAuth 2 providers and uh, authenticate the call. But um, developers oftentimes need to build authorization-enabled systems. So you need to be able to build a system that has different uh, RBAC rules and scopes and user roles inside of it. And this is fairly involved because it, it's really hard coded to the underlying database that you're using. Um, so there is a community proposal um, to be able to do this under a single API. And this is interesting if this is something that you care about. Again, go on the proposal repository, give us feedback. Um, and another open proposal um, by Mike from the community, another Dapper maintainer for the Rust SDK is one for a search API, which will allow um, full text search into supported databases. This is still very early days. Um, for this proposal, but um, this is the longer term roadmap in terms of features beyond 115. Um, here's some of the stuff that we as maintainers care about. We want to improve the uh, integration story for root certificates that are um, issued by um, uh, certificate stores that are non dapperized So Dapper today will issue uh, a root certificate for your Kubernetes cluster, for example, or for your self-hosted installation. Um, Search Manager is another um, soon to be graduated CNCF project, uh, sister CNCF project to, to us um, that uh, can issue third party root certificates based on external providers very easily. And so we want to make sure that we hook up into this existing ecosystem and we give ops teams and uh, DevSecOps teams all of the flexibility they need to make sure that what they have going right now works with Dapper and they don't have to um, you know, use Dapper's own certificates or go through a convoluted process of exporting their certificates and importing it into Dapper, which it does support today. Uh, another thing we're looking to do is advance the jobs API introduced in Dapper 114 to stable. Um, the jobs API is a cron API. It really gives you the ability to schedule um, millions of uh, cron jobs at scale. Um, and really be, be able to, to express your scheduling desires um, in a very simple to use HTTP or GRPC call. This is distributed, so Dapper has a cron binding today, but if you have five Dapper instances for five applications, each binding will hit uh, each one of these applications, and um, if you're, you know, Dapper um, restarts, if Dapper uh, process restarts, then the binding will basically just kick off again from the beginning in terms of the schedule. Um, but the jobs API is stateful. It keeps track of uh, instances. If you have five instances and you've uh, of the same application and you've scheduled one job, it'll hit one replica um, of your application. And so this really gives you distributed cron scheduling at scale. We want to advance this to stable as soon as we can. Um, another thing we want to do is advance the distributed lock API um, to stable. This has been in Dapper for quite a while now. It allows you to do really cool things like do leader election. Imagine you have seven instances of an application, but you basically need to have only one active leader at any given point in time doing some work, and then you want to fail over to a uh, passive instance if that leader fails. Um, this is a really, really complex distributed systems challenge. But with Dapper, you can actually do that in about five lines of code, I would venture to say. 
freezing Python, really, because Python, I think, is the easiest API to do this with. Um, but uh, we want to make sure that we have enough content, enough testing, enough SDK support that we feel comfortable um, for moving into stable. And so we're going to be looking at this, too. Um, bulk PubSub has been in Dapper for ages now. We know of a lot of users using it in production. It's extremely stable. The only thing we're missing there um, are docs, so documentation and samples. Um, we have an adequate amount of tests, I would say. SDK support is also there. So um, this is you know, fairly safe to take into production from what I know. We talked to a lot of users doing this, um, but you know, we want to make sure that um, everything is um, right and we can certify this as stable. Um, so we will be looking into doing that beyond 1.15. Um, I think I'm out of time now, so this is um, my last slide. I am going to stop sharing now, and if there are any questions, again, you can find me on Discord. Your own too is my handle. Also on GitHub, please feel free to talk to me. That was really exciting, um, particularly around the conversational AI piece, and a lot of folks in the chat have been talking about it and asking about it, so I know they definitely appreciate that update from you. Yeah, no worries.